for the biggest fish, the hottest bites. This week, here on In Depth Outdoors. Got it. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? Got him. Whoa, this is an absolute monster. <laughs> to the best ice fisheries from across the ice belt. We'll fish longer, punch more holes, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites on ice. Oh, that's... <laughs> what a specimen. Oh, look at the size of that. Look at that fish. <laughs> that is a monster bike. is in-depth outdoors. Gonna be lots of brake lights on the way out today. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, it's like wow. 494 people heading to work, except everybody's going ice fishing. Yep. You just got brake lights in this direction and headlights in that <laughs> direction. It's actually kind of cool. <laughs> There's two basic ways to do this Lake of the Woods trip. There's like the community piling with everybody else thing that we're gonna do today. Yep. And then there's the, the way we usually do it, which is hop on the snowmobiles or in the Polaris and run up towards the islands. How far out? Yeah, we'll probably be out eight to 10. Yeah. Um, if we go up to the islands, we're talking 25 to 35 wow. miles one way. Wow. If you're doing it on snowmobiles, it'll definitely remind you that your uh, back is no longer the back of a young man. It kind of beats you up a little bit. You've never fished like a little before, have you? No, this is all new for me. Well, one of the things I love about fishing like of the woods is you know, one one second you're catching a 14-inch sauger, and then and then the next it's a 30-inch walleye. I mean, I've caught so many big fish here. Uh, a lot of people will squeal a little bit about the drive up to Lake of the Woods from from the Twin Cities. Yeah. But uh, it's way different for you. Oh yeah. That's like twice 12, the drive plus. It's just about 12 hours. Yeah. I can see why you don't come up here very often. A day. Spend the day driving. You don't walleye fish through the ice much at all. No. Very rarely. If I, if I get lucky, I get to do it once a year. It's uh, something I don't get to do very often. And uh, big body of water, hope we uh, tie into some big walleye. Oh, beautiful sunrise. It's gonna be a beautiful day, bud. I'm excited. Yeah! The strike master says there's lots of ice. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll pile in here and I'll get tip-ups rigged up. We can get a couple of rods down and jig some spoons and okay. then uh, if fish start coming through, we'll throw out some tip-ups. You know, this fishing in the house thing ain't so bad. No. Nope. I, I wish we were sitting right on top of a big ball of fish for you. Yeah, well, I like it. It's way different than uh, popping bluegills. That's true. There he is. Not so big. Small guy, but he thumped it. Little guy. Puking up a minnow head. Hey, you got a nice little school, a little flurry come in here. This is what kind of what Lake of Woods is all about. You know, you get out here on this basin, out here in this deep mud, and you can go 30 minutes and not see a fish, but when they do come through, everybody in the group is usually gonna hook up or have an opportunity. Nice walleye. I mean, not a giant. Me too. solid. No, I think I got him. Oh yeah, cool. Nice fish there. You know, that's just a real common size Lake of the Woods walleye right there. Gonna be pushing out towards, you know, 19, 20 inches. So we're gonna let this one go. Dave, do you have that hemostat again? You bet I do. You know, of the walleyes that we've caught, they have absolutely pounded these spoons. Yes. Boop, there we go. I'm fishing a lightning spoon. That's a bait that I really like in stained, dirty water. It's orange chartreuse. On the back there, we've got the glow. All the above are real visible in stained water, which really seems to help up here on these Lake of the Woods walleyes. You, you got it. another one working, don't you? That's it, yep. So I'm gonna let that one go. Nice fish there. Say goodbye. Off he goes. Good one? Yeah. I mean like as in walleye? Yeah. Let me get that transducer cord okay. for you. All right. Oh, you just came in, there was two of them. You're around. All right. Came in right off the bottom, just smoked that slender spoon. 
That feels good. Nice little head shake. Oh, Ooh. it's a nice fish, buddy. <laughs> That's no messing around. Oh, oh man, look at that. Oh, that fish was going nowhere. He smoked it. Yeah. <sighs> nice. Cool. Lake of the Woods, buddy. That is nice. Beautiful fish. <laughs> it, I didn't see the spoon at all. So. Yeah, it's gone. It's just gone. Holy smokes. Hold it. If you let this fish shake, you're going to kill me. You got it? Good. Sweet. This is that 5 16 ounce silver with red tape slender spoon. Nice 22, 22 inch fish or so, real healthy. I've got something kicking around down here on the bottom that I'm going to try to catch. I like to get this back in and try to uh, catch yes. another one. Well, usually what will happen is these fish will kind of come through in waves and you'll have an hour, hour and a half where they're around, you yeah. know, so you don't want to dawdle too much. Well, I hope you top it, Coons, but if you don't, you've already done pretty good. There she goes. Sweet. Cool sight, buddy. You know what's even cooler than that? When I catch him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. You bet. Thank you very much. That's why we made the trip right that there. That is awesome. Let's do that again. I like it. <laughs> This winter, start seeing red. Visit MarkhamTech.com and this winter, start seeing red. that got him Ooh, that's a little bit uh, more impressive ah he's not too shabby I love the bonus fish anytime you can get him on the the dead stick I think he's gonna be a sauger I'd like to see a walleye but it's a walleye boy you Treat him like he's a bar of soap. <laughs> Hardly get a hold of him. Eater. Hopefully this is a precursor to a fantastic low light bite here this afternoon. You know, it's it's a tough decision. Every fisherman goes through it. We uh, showed up on this second spot of the day about noon. Uh, we had a couple real nice walleyes. Dave had that big fish. And of course the decision then becomes, you know, do we stay or do we go? Uh, the thinking was that this was going to be a, a decent spot uh, come the afternoon. You usually see a real nice run of fish about oh, 3 till about 4.30, quarter to 5. And uh, you can bet wrong. And that's what we're kind of concerned about right now. It's getting towards about 3.30. We hadn't seen anything come through that eight in about an hour uh, until that fish right there. In fact, I think the fish that I just caught on this dead stick was a fish that Dave had worked upon his spoon that just kind of swam away and came over and ate the bait. But we're really hoping here that in the last half hour, 45 minutes, we really see these fish kick on. Uh, we need probably about six or eight fish, for me at least, to feel like this day was, you know, a real good day. You've got a real nice walleye on the ice so far. Yep. Yep. I'd like to see a few more to go with it. Yeah, well, let's do it. Oh, Jesus. That feels like a pretty good fish, Coons. Okay, let me help you out. Kind of a sweet little deal we got going here. I'd prefer to catch them on the spoons, but if the spoons bring them in and they hit the dead rod, I don't care. <laughs> Does it feel like a good fish? Yeah, this is a nice fish. Come here, sweetheart. I wish I'd have spotted it sooner. I mean, I gotta be honest with you. I'm not sure how long that bobber's been down. <laughs> Well, like you said, we've had these fish up on the graph. Well, the reason I went to go look at my bobber was because there was a fish on the LX9 over here that was holding very steady on the screen. He wasn't reacting to my spoon anymore. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, maybe oh, he's, yeah. he's I James. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. Koontz. That. There's a nice fish. I. Yep, yours is longer. <laughs> and I think yours is heavier. That's a nice fish, though, James. Clearly mine's smarter. No, absolutely. <laughs> nice. Thank you. You bet. Well, nice we're coming job. into uh, prime time here, right in the roof of the mouth. I mean, perfect hook set placement on a fish like that. That fish is going nowhere, but will not 
be an issue with the release. Good grief. There we go. Yeah, you bet. Sweet. Lake of the Woods, you know, so many big fish get caught up here. Spotty bite right now. We're working it out, putting some nice fish on the ice, but they're just not coming fast and furious. Sometimes though, when they come like this, it's that much more rewarding. Yep. I'm gonna let this one go. I know we're coming right into just perfect prime time. We do not want to linger here. Uh-uh. Sweet fish. All right, sweetheart. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> we're giving each other high fives. <laughs> uh, that was hilarious. It was a little bit like driving your truck on ice. You couldn't get traction. <laughs> All right. I need a minnow. Uh -huh. That was pretty cool. Oh, 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 oh. Right here. All right, uh, that's a big angry walleye. Of course, it is getting to be about eel pout time. Oh man. <laughs> I didn't get the eel pout shutters. Man, this is awesome. You know, it's one of the reasons to come to Lake of the Woods. You just got such an oh, awesome at shot at a huge fish. It's another nice fish. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You bet. Attaboy. <laughs> Dead stick sticks it again. Yes. Let's, uh, we don't have a lot of time to work with here. You know, Lake of the Woods is a good, bite during this magic hour like this but once it goes dark these fish are pretty much done so we got to make hay you mind if i slide that one back through your little uh you are, pool you there and down the hole you're using definitely i just kind of like the waiting pool thing that you got going here dave <laughs> whoosh awesome oh, yeah. good so i think the fishing's done but we have a gorgeous sunset by which to pack up our stuff you ready to call it? I think we should. All right. All good things come to an end. I tell you what, if you want to uh, start picking up some stuff outside, I can put away the rods and kill two birds with one stone. That sounds good. Got some nice fish on the ice. Crappies tomorrow. Crappies tomorrow. All we got to do is get back off the lake. All right. I always uh, used to tell people any day that you get to see a sunrise and a sunset in the same day outside is a good day. At Otter Outdoors, we're committed to building a tougher, stronger, smarter line of ice shelters. Tougher is our roto-molded sleds, known for their legendary strength and durability. Stronger is our anodized square tube frame, oversized and substantially stronger than round tubing. Smarter is our fully sewn and quilted insulated Pro Series and Wild Series thermal shells, and a complete line of smarter accessories. This winter, let Otter Outdoors unleash the tougher, stronger, smarter ice angler in you. Mind if I fish with you guys? No, but if you're using custom jigs and spins lures, you better get a bigger bucket. With custom jigs and spins, new tungsten heavy metal jigs, you'll get down to the big ones quickly and catch more and bigger fish. These jigs have been designed by world-renowned Croatian ice fisherman Czechai Matt. Czechai number one with Czechai lures fishing. Go Czechai, go! So when you use custom jigs and spins, try the new tungsten heavy metal ice jigs. Custom jigs and spins, the hottest bait below the ice. Well, we're on our second leg. Uh, we made it to Polaris last night, picked up a track vehicle, and we are down here near Bemidji this morning. We're headed to uh, a lake right near Cass Lake to go fish crappies. I slept great. Koontz, on the other hand, spent most of the night tossing and turning with <laughs> visions of big crappies dancing, dancing in his head. head. <laughs> Koontz, I will consider this an absolute triumph of a trip if we're able to put a 14 and a half 15 inch crappie in that uh, paw of yours <gasps> touchdown Ooh, that would be awesome crappies are definitely moving into the midwinter patterns now uh, meaning the crappies will be out over basin areas soft bottom mud typically 25 to 35 foot you're not you're looking for areas that don't have any major changes in depth you're not looking for sharp breaks or any kind of structure just flat basin portions of the lake these crappies just roam around out there if you can find where they're roaming you're probably going to catch them however they can be very hard to find that's really what we're up against here today is finding them if we find them we'll probably catch them and the nice thing about getting on a crappie bite like this this early in the winter is you can count on this type of bite hanging in there for the rest of the winter don't that's not going to cut it don't even punch Come a on. hole with that thing no that's a corkscrew that's not an auger <laughs> That's good for opening a bottle of wine. Uh, I'm gonna today, you watch. Ooh. 
Ooh, she's a little chilly, Dave. There he is. That feels like a good fish. This fish was down about 31 feet of water, and he comes up looking just like that. Man, that's a nice fish there. Pushing 12, dropping down a, a nice little uh, pink and white tungsten jig from Custom Jigs and Spins, a pink and white plastic. Dropped it down 36 feet of water. That fish was up about five feet up off the bottom. I just slowly dropped that jig down in front of him, and he just snuck right back up on her side slowly drop that down right in front of him. He picked it right up off the bottom. Not bad for five minutes worth of work, eh? No, uh-uh. Nice. That's, that's a nice fish. Not quite mission accomplished, but we're getting close. No, we are definitely. What do you think, that's 12? Yeah, I'd go better. 12, 11? 12, 12 and a half. 12? That's a nice fish. Thank you. There she goes back. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Go for another one. You know, for being two below zero, it is just awesome out. Yes, it is. Besides having your fingers stick to the real one, they're wet. It's not so bad. I got just a bunch of them stacked here. But like you said, there's no wind. There is, yes, there he is. It's just beautiful. Man, this is what people live for when they're crappie fishing. I'm fighting this fish, bringing him up, and there is just a herd of them down there. Come here, buddy. I got light lines, so I, I don't want to break him off. Not that he's a crappie capable of breaking three pound test line. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's heading in the right direction. Here's what we're fishing that's a My Moon tungsten. And then I've got a, uh, a ratso body on there. Pink. Crappies are digging it. Beautiful fish. This is what every crappie fisherman wants to see. Look at my graph here. I have crappies stacked about eight feet above bottom. We're in 36 foot of water. I've got them all the way up to 26 feet. So, you know, that's 10 feet of water. Do you still got those fish sitting there, Coons? I don't have anything sitting on the graph right now. But when I dropped the Markham down in and I had some irregular marks down in the bottom when I'm like, Maybe I need to adjust my zoom. And here what it was, I was dropping my jig down and there was just stacked, like what they call a Christmas tree, full of crappies. So I'm getting back down there to see if I can catch another one. It's two below zero, I can't believe it. I mean, it's so calm out that it's actually warm. I mean, we've got the crappie excitement kind of keeping us warm too, but with absolutely no breeze, we were thinking we were gonna be living in the otter again today, you know, up in the lake of the woods. It was just so windy that there was no option to fish outside. It was actually, warmer up there. Today the actual temperature is lower, but no wind. Easy to fish outside today. Got him. They're a little touchy this morning. Have to work it real slow. Takes a while for those fish to decide to commit. But given the size of them, I'll spend the time to make it happen. Let him back. And still, just got an absolute blizzard of them down there. There's clearly some much larger fish that are hanging about halfway down in that group. Good Lord. Well, I think I got the color figured out over here, Coons, but I just got to sift through all these smaller guys to get to the horses. Come on over and take a look at it. It's just uh, that My Moon jig. Yeah. Largest size, glow red with a pink tail, but I shortened it way up. There we go. boy. That's getting there in the right direction. What do you think? That might be right up there with the one that you had. <laughs> You're not going to tackle me, are you? <laughs> See? A little, oh, my, yeah. little my moon. Yep. Pink body. Kind of a pinkish but clear tail to it. Yep. That's a really nice fish. So how are you, uh, how are you working that? Just tiny little waves on the rod tip. Gotcha. Yeah. And they smacking it or are they just pulling it down? Nah, just you just see this little tip on, gotcha. the, on the rod tip. Super fish. Good job. That's one of the larger uh, crappies I've caught so far this winter. Been through a whole bunch of 10s and 11s. You know, haven't done a lot of crappie fishing yet. Usually do a lot of that midwinter, but that's a, uh, a great fish in my book. Put that one back. God, they're gorgeous in the sun like that. See you later, sweetheart. And they're still there in force. Since 1946, Strike Master has held to a simple idea. If you build an auger that makes less work out of drilling holes, people will have more fun ice fishing. Strike Master's two-stroke solo series provides unmatched cutting speed in a lightweight design. New this winter, Strike Master unveils their Honda-powered four-stroke auger. The Honda 35cc light tears up the ice with reliable Honda power. Strike Master Ice Augers. Visit us online today to find the Strike Master auger that's right for you. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. 
and we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. Coons, I swear to you, you're just asking for it. Dave Coons is uh, drilling holes with a uh, wine corker. Uh, what did you say that was, a five inch auger? Yeah. You're just gonna prove to me that you can get a big crappie through there, aren't you? Absolutely. Dave uh, fishes the Mississippi backwaters and one of the issues fishing on the Mississippi is the water you fish is so shallow that you don't want to create this big giant hole uh, when you're fishing over two foot of water. Uh, the fish won't ever come underneath that big shaft of uh, light so what they do is they fish these really small augers. I tell you what, you take a look at that thing, it's about that big around, you swear you couldn't get anything through it that you'd actually want to catch, but Dave says you can. Does it make a popping sound as it comes through? <laughs> hey, this one feels like a nice fish. Same plastic, same hole. I actually moved out of my little hot spot here, hit a couple other holes and it wasn't nearly as good. Come right back and the fish are just double stacked from when I left. Oh, look at this. There's a nice fish. Oh yeah. Same little finesse plastic right there in the snoot. That's that My Moon Tungsten. You know, people get kind of gaga about tungsten and they use it in a lot of different situations. This is one that I really think tungsten makes a difference. You're out here in this deeper water, he can fish a small jig and it gets down to the crappies real quick. That's definitely a bonus. Well, that's my best fish of the day for sure. I mean, that's my best crappie of the year, no doubt. I hope to beat it, but I'm awful happy with this one right now. Back you go, sweetheart. Okay, here Ready? we go, here we go, here we go. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a good fish through a five inch hole. I'm absolutely serious on that one. Oh, come on, get your head through. Get your head through. <laughs> How's it working out for you, Dave? Come on. Holy heck, is that a nice crappie. I think you have to reel up your sleeve there, bud. Folks at home, did you see this coming your way? Can you get him? Jeez, Dave. Look at that. I bet you won't be releasing him down that hole. That is huge. All right, you proved me wrong. Give it to me. Yeah. Oh, you can man, catch what a, a tank. 14 plus inch crappie in a five inch hole. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my Make gosh. You walk home. Oh, that baby just smoked it. Now you can see the difference in the size of the, of the hole. You know, I don't think I want to do that again. That was a little tough for him to come up through. But what a beautiful fish. We gotta go take him and let him go through a different hole. Let's run him over to one of them bigger ones. You got a measuring stick? Your biggest in a while, eh, Coons? Yes, that is by far the biggest in quite a long time. Wow. You did it, Coons. Dude, that's a 15 inch crappie. And that's not a, maybe it's a 15 inch crappie. That no. is a on the ruler that 15 inch crappie. on the ruler 15 inch crappie. When was the last time you caught one that big? Ah, James, I don't remember. I know it's been a long, long time, but, and they're so far and few between. That is priceless. That is just awesome. I want to catch another one. I need to let this one go. Here you go, big fella. You're back to joining the family. Look at that. It took right off too. Awesome. I've never been so happy to be proven wrong. <laughs> you can pull a 15 inch crappie through a five inch hole. <laughs> I love it. I wouldn't make a habit out of that. Oh though. no, that was awesome. I think I'll stay out of the small holes from now on. Those, these fish are too big. Spike the hole, or spike the football, man. We got, <laughs> we got our Lake of the Woods walleyes yep. and then we got our big, big crappies today. Oh. Perfect. Well, old man, that's all for me. Yeah. I can handle two below when there's no wind, but <laughs> we got the clouds in, we got the wind now. Have clouds came in, pretty much shut them fish right down. You know what we're doing on the way home? Buying you a lottery ticket. <laughs> 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 okay, with that said, thanks for watching. David and I had a great trip. Walleyes on Lake of the Woods, crappies here on the Cast Lake chain. Where we're gonna be next week, I have no idea, but we do appreciate you watching. So thanks for tuning in, we'll see you next week. Go home. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.